Good morning. My name is Karen Wingfield, and I am one of the instructors, teachers, in the Dewar's class at Trinity United Methodist Church. Today we have two scriptures. The first is from Psalms 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The second scripture is from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. Listen, listen, listen. Were you ever told to be listening as a child or in school? Have you ever told your children to listen or perhaps even a spouse? Because sometimes we don't listen too well and perhaps we do not hear as well. Today the lesson is titled, The Importance of Listening and Paying Attention. The author speaks about his dog, Maybell. Living in a neighborhood in the country, Maybell goes outdoors to do her thing at bedtime and usually returns to the safety of her home right afterwards. But sometimes she hears the coyotes in the distance and her ears perk up and she obviously wants to join that pack of wild things howling in the dark. She becomes caught between getting a treat if she goes in and the lure of communing with coyotes. And sometimes the call of the wild is so strong, off she goes, needing to be rescued before the coyotes make her their meal of the evening. In our Christian life, one of the most important disciplines as a follower is listening for our master's voice and obeying those commands of the master. And like Maybell, we hear the voices aside from our master trying to entice us to follow them to join in. But sometimes those voices in the dark are the sounds of people trying to lead us astray or even devouring our souls. In this chapter, we will consider how we hear God's voice and how we can be better able to follow our Good Shepherd. God speaks to us today. Theologians use the term revelation to describe God's self-enclosure of his efforts to speak to us. Sometimes theologians speak of two categories of revelation, general revelation and spatial revelation. General revelation, or natural revelation, as it's sometimes called, is often used to describe what we learn from God, from observing the world that God has made, including nature, the arts, our human story, and more. Spatial revelation involves God's direction to speak to us, including the work of the Holy Spirit, the life, teaching, death, and resurrection of Jesus, and the scriptures. First, let's consider natural revelation, and that, of course, would include nature. We are very fortunate here in Kansas to be able to see the sky during the day and nighttime without smog and lots of lights cluttering up the sky. Where we live, we are oftentimes able to see the sunset, and the colors and the arrangements of the colors are gorgeous. In the early mornings, going down Coronado Drive, we have a wide vista available to us with the morning sunrise, clouds in many shapes, various arrangements, changing minute by minute. It is certainly easy to believe in God and his goodness looking at these color shows he puts on for us. Ron and I were taking my parents out to the Wheatland Cafe in Hudson, Kansas, which is a great place to eat on Sundays, one cold winter day several years ago. And along the way, there is a short stretch of highway with giant cottonwood trees on both sides of the road, covering the road like a canopy. 
This particular day, there was hoarfrost on the branches, and the sun was shining through, making the branches shine and sparkle like diamonds. My mother, with Alzheimer's at the time, said to me, how can people not believe in God? Quite a comment, huh? With all the peripheral that goes on with the sky, we also have trees, grass, flowers, bushes, and wheat fields, all uplifting and a gift of our God. Jesus routinely saw in nature illustrations of the kingdom of God, such as mustard seeds, wheat, weeds, sheep, fish, fig trees, and yeast, all of which were woven into his parables. He had a keen eye for how the natural world revealed truths about God. The natural world speaks to us, giving us insight into the spiritual life. God speaks to us through nature. If only we pause to listen and observe. A second revelation is that God has given human beings the ability to create music, art, and literature. All of these avenues speak to us, and they speak to the human condition of our lives throughout the ages. Music is a necessity in our lives, sometimes uncontrollable, as we sometimes feel our toes tapping to a certain tune, a grandma or a grandma holding a young child twirling around or gently bumping that child in tune to a little ditty, a couple whirling around on the dance floor after a wedding ceremony. We sometimes even get to clapping with music during the church service. Music is important to us in church services, at weddings, at celebrations, and at funerals. We heard a group of men singing at one of our doers class parties, and we were all uplifted with their beautiful voices and the messages in song. Thank you, God, for creating meaningful music for our lives. If only we pause to listen and observe. Artwork. I always admire anyone who can paint a picture, and it is recognizable. And obviously, art is important to us, because I venture to say we all have art of some kind around the house, even pictures of our family, as they are art too. We visited the Louvre in France, and the art was undescribable. From the huge canvases covering a whole wall, depicting war scenes, to the Mona Lisa, a very small but influential piece of art. Art can enhance our lives by speaking to us and presenting scenes of the human condition over the years. Art can also include dance, which also can be very moving, and showing us indeed how fortunate we are to be living our lives in today's world if we only pause to listen and observe. And literature, what can I say? I love to read, and I know many of you love to read too. The library is a wonderful place to visit. Pick up a book, and we're transported to another place, another time, perhaps even in another body. We can travel from the dark ages, and we can travel to outer space. We can read history, or politics, or biographies. We have writing available to us in films, and also in plays, which oftentimes drag us into a dimension, an event in history, that is sometimes uncomfortable, but giving us a teachable moment in our lives. God speaks through music, art, and literature, if only we pause to listen and observe. A third general revelation is through life experiences and people. The author says that as a pastor, he spends a lot of time listening to people tell their stories. And in so many stories, he hears accounts of sin and redemption, fear and courage, despair and hope. He has witnessed people survive terrible tragedies, forgive seemingly unforgivable wrongs, and some of these people have rebounded from terrible failures. And the author goes on to say, God has used these people to teach him too. In many of the parables, Jesus has involved the kingdom of God through stories of people, a shepherd searching for a lost sheep, 
a farmer scattering seed, a prodigal son welcomed home by his merciful father, a good Samaritan, a rich young ruler, a prostitute who wept at Jesus' feet, a woman who gave her last two coins in the offering. God speaks through our everyday interaction with people. If only we pause to listen and observe. The fourth revelation is conscience, intuition, and reason. Our conscience is an inner sense of right and wrong, somewhat based upon our upbringing and our religious experiences. Closely aligned with conscience is intuition, a kind of knowing or sensing that there, sometimes we call a gut feeling. These, along with our capacity to reason, are all means that God has given us to know him, to discern God's will to sense right from wrong and perceive danger or opportunity if we only pause to listen and observe. So general revelation, nature, the arts, life experiences, and people, conscience, intuition, and reason. But just observing the world around us does not guarantee we will draw the correct conclusions about God's character. And that is why spatial revelation, God's direct disclosure of his divine self and will, is important. The ways in which God more directly reveals the divine self and will to us is through the Holy Spirit, Scripture, and Jesus. The Holy Spirit is cited in the Scriptures many times throughout the New Testament. We believe that the Holy Spirit guides Christians today, but how does that Spirit speak to us? Well, typically a whisper, not a shout, a nudge, not a shove. When we are studying the Scripture, praying, or sitting in a workshop, listening to the choir music or instruments play, playing, or the pastor preaching, basically any time at all in our daily lives. And sometimes that moment comes out of the blue, like, I need to call someone, or I need to stop and speak to that person. Perhaps we sense that somebody needs a word of encouragement, a spatial hello card, a cheery hi sounds good too, these moments could be called God incident as opposed to coincidence. And although hugs are not allowed during this time in our lives, hugs are a great God incident. But it is important to note that we are all a bit of hard hearing when it comes to listening to or for the spirit. Our insight may only be our subconscious. The words we are hearing may not be God's but only someone's opinion. So we must test those insights we get, the thoughts that come to us and the ideas we are hearing to see if we are hearing well. First John 4.1 says, Dear friends, don't believe every spirit. Test the spirits to see if they are from God because many false prophets have gone into the world. How do we do this? Talk to trusted Christian friends talk to a pastor, but ultimately we turn to the scriptures and the person, words, and works of Jesus to help us discern God's will and to make sense of the world around us. It is not what Jesus would do, it is what Jesus did do. Jesus not only read scripture, he memorized it, prayed it, and lived it. We should recognize that reading and studying scripture will be a very important part of our spiritual life. The Old Testament is the story of Israel and Israel's relationship with God. It was written by people who were inspired by the same spirit that works in us. It was written over a thousand, peri year, pe thousand year period from the late Bronze Age through the Iron Age and to the Greek and Roman periods from roughly about 1400 to 150 BC. It contains short stories, case law, epic battles, court histories, poetry, songs, prayers, wise saising, and social and religious criticism by the prophets, demanding that justice characterize the people's lives and society. The New Testament, as you know it, is the story of Jesus, God's son, the long-awaited Jewish Messiah, the savior and king. 
He came to show us what God is and who God calls us to be. It contains the four Gospels, the only first century accounts we have of Jesus. The epistles, which some predate the writing of the Gospels, contain the theological and pastoral reflections of the earliest Christians about the significance of Jesus and what it meant to be a follower. And the book of Revelation contains a call to faithfulness to Christians in danger of giving up their faith or compromising their culture. It foretells a day when evil is destroyed, paradise is restored, and death has been defeated. The Bible can be described by Christians as a love letter from God or an owner manual, owner's manual for the Bible, B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. And although Jesus read all the scriptures, the Old Testament at the time, and quoted parts of it, he read it in the light of two commandments. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. He referred to this one as the greatest and the first commandment. The second commandment captured his ethic. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. When God sought to speak to the human race, to disclose who God is and why God calls us to be, he did not send a book, he sent a person. Jesus was God's word, God's message wrapped in human flesh. And how do we see and know Jesus? We know him through our life of prayer, our experience of him in our lives, and others' experience of him. But our primary way of knowing Jesus, what he said, what he did, his heart and character and hopes for his followers, is through the New Testament, and most clearly and directly through the Gospels. Studying the scriptures can be done many ways, through small study groups and through just reading every day. Statistics indicate that those Americans who own a Bible have read little or none of it. Another poll found that only about 35% of Christians read their Bible weekly. But if we are serious about walking with God daily, to know God and God's will for us, reading and studying scripture will be a regular part of our lives. Some questions to ask after reading scripture are, what does this passage tell me about God? What does it tell me about people? And what does it tell me about myself and God's will for me? After worship and prayer, if we would walk with God and begun the, become the people God wants us to be, we have to learn to pay attention. With all the noise of life bombarding us, sometimes it's difficult to hear the voice of God. But when we pay attention, and if we but pause to listen and observe, we can find our lives enriched as we become more aware that God is speaking to us in so many ways. Would you pray with me? Lord, please teach us to pause, to listen, and to observe. Help us to pay attention to the many ways you are revealed in the world around us and in our everyday lives. And help us read and study the scriptures and to find in them the words of life. Let us be listening and hearing every day. In Jesus' name, amen.